Hey everyone, I'm Andy Ruffell from eTechnics.com and with the latest game that kind of everyone was waiting for, The Division 2, coming from Ubisoft or Ubisoft or whatever you want to call them. Some people just refer to them as Satan, although maybe I'm getting confused with EA. Either way, uh, let's move on. We're going to be looking at kind of how the game actually performs across multiple graphics cards. So let's jump in and take a look. So with the game, obviously there's two sides to look at it. Obviously there is pure kind of gameplay, which, you know, we're not IGN or, uh, you know, PC game or so we're not really going to sort of delve into that area of it. We want to kind of look more at kind of the technical side of things and how it actually performs on your graphics cards. So we've got our kind of usual test bench set up. Everything is actually slightly changed on this. As you'd normally see, we'd have the janky water cooling set up, but I'm actually planning to move that over um, to a different test bench. So that's going to be coming up in a later video. So be sure to obviously stay tuned for that but like I said uh, we've actually got one graphics card already in the rig which is the EVGA GTX 1660 XC Ultra which also worth noting we are actually giving this card away so be sure to check that out we will link to it somewhere above my head and also in the description below but we wanted to sort of show you how that performs as well as 14 other cards so before we actually I guess really dissect the results let's take a look at them glorious benchmarks So as you saw from the benchmarks, we actually decided to run everything on high. Now, back in the past, we'd kind of be running maybe low to medium to really sort of, you know, give us a, a good performance range because some cards are obviously going to be at the bottom of the stack while some are going to be at the top. And it's no good really sort of seeing, you know, likes of a 2080 Ti performing absolutely outstanding and then sort of your lower end cards really not even sort of being able to play it at all so we've actually found that high is kind of the way that you know things are going now with graphics cards getting a lot faster and especially with things like the 1660 giving you better value for money it does kind of seem that i guess you know high would be the way to go because just dropping down your resolution or even just sort of you know tweaking the high profile a little bit and customizing it to your own can give you kind of you know some some decent performance increases now what we also decided to do was actually take two different graphics cards one from the amd camp and one from the nvidia camp and actually run them on the four different presets so everything from sort of low to medium to high and then obviously the top setting with ultra so let's check out those and see how that actually fed Okay, so another thing that I actually wanted to show you guys was kind of, you know, the graphic settings uh, from within this game, because you might be looking to buy uh, The Division 2, but, you know, maybe you haven't actually seen anything in terms of gameplay, graphics, that kind of thing. So actually looking in the graphics quality, there's a few niggly little things with this. So as you can see, ours is set to custom. We didn't actually set it to custom, we did set it to high. But the problem is, as soon as you actually set it to high, so if I show you, V-Sync automatically turns on, which is really, really frustrating. So, you know, message to Ubisoft, hopefully you can fix that. As soon as then you go onto V-Sync and turn it off, it kind of turns it into a custom profile. Other than that, there's not really a great deal um, within the graphic setting. Obviously you have shadow quality, spot shadows, uh, contact shadows. A lot of it is, you know, shadow based uh, reflections uh, and everything is based off that high uh, preset. So like I say, we are running high. We are going to be doing this at 1080 as well, just so you can kind of see, you know, um, how things can run on one of the latest games and how well this kind of game has been developed on a 1660, which is relatively a low budget card. Now, when we go to video, you can see that we are set to windowed mode and resolution. We are at 1080p. We have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. And uh, other than that, we have DX12 enabled. Um, obviously, this is a DX12 game. As long as you have one of the latest graphics cards that has DX12 uh, capabilities and you are on Windows 10 then happy days you can run this 
Um, you then get a few sort of grayed out settings uh, as well. But a lot of the actual graphic settings are kind of, I guess, classed as diminishing returns. There's a lot of settings in here, such as particle detail. You could take that from ultra down to high and probably not notice too much of a difference, but it is going to give you uh, quite a key difference when it comes to the actual kind of, you know, uh, what you're seeing and the frame rates that you're getting compared to, you know, the, the actual overall quality settings. Now, if we click on benchmark, uh, this is quite a cool kind of you know built-in benchmark so it actually gives you a score tells you what graphics preset you're on the results are in fps gpu percentage cpu percentage and it also gives you uh, a bit of a kind of you know a run out display of um you can actually view it all kind of in a text file later on if you decide to so once this all loads up we can talk a little bit about kind of you know what we're seeing and some of the other results that we got on uh, some of the other graphics cards so you also get a bit of a UI, which is just over here, again, telling you what your FPS is, your CPU percentage and your GPU percentage. Now, after running this game on, you know, as I say, about 15 different graphics cards, it's not actually that demanding on your CPU. I've got an i9-9900K inside this system, but, you know, you are going to be able to run it pretty well on even a lower end system. And we will put up somewhere in the video the kind of uh, minimum specs of this as well because they do have kind of the minimum, uh, the recommended as well for various different presets. So at the moment we are running high and on this we have DX12 enabled and you can see that we are getting some really good kind of quality detail on here uh, in terms of sort of the grass, the shadows, the ambient occlusion, the lighting sort of coming through over here. Um, just some really sort of, you know, nice uh, sort of aesthetics really, really kind of pleasing stuff. Now, I do also want to talk about, obviously, uh, quality on some of the other graphics cards that we've run. So, obviously, we are running on high, as I have mentioned. Uh, when we was looking at sort of, you know, 2080 Ti at 4K, we were still getting uh, 81 frames per second, which is, you know, pretty special when you're looking at kind of how Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus have actually been running, uh, you know, even on the, the kind of high-end graphics cards. But with this, you know, you, you can actually get really good playable frame rates on high uh, at 4K, um, you know, pretty much tripped out. Obviously, you can move up to sort of the higher settings such as Ultra, um, but, you know, again, it could come down to kind of diminishing returns. So really, it's down to kind of the trade-off that you want to get. So here's the actual results. So you can see, as I say, we do get a score, which is quite nice, kind of reminiscent, I guess, of, you know, uh, benchmarks that we see from FutureMark, giving us a score, which makes it really kind of, you know, easy to compare this with, um, you know, your friends or other people's results, uh, because sometimes it's not all about the GPU. You know, your CPU will have an effect on this. Your memory will have an effect um, down to even, you know, the drivers that you're running. Uh, so, you know, this is a nice way of kind of, you know, showing, showing things. And it also shows you kind of what uh, FPS and everything you were getting in the different zones as well. So you can sort of see maybe, uh, you know, the, the differences where if a certain scene or a certain zone has, you know, better lighting effects that maybe, you know, your graphics card isn't so good with sort of, you know, lighting, ambient occlusion, that kind of thing. Uh, as I say, you also get kind of, you know, the percentages of your GPU and CPU. So on this at 1080p, we was getting 85 frames per second. Uh, you know, really, really good results, really. Um, that's more than a sort of, you know, an achievable playable frame rate. Really, in the, in the grand scheme of things, 30 frames per second is achievable. 60, you know, is that magic number to go for. 85% on a GTX 1660 is pretty remarkable. So there you have it. Um, as I say, there was another area that I kind of wanted to look at, which we've already shown you the benchmarks for, but it was more kind of looking at the two cards that we tested. So I'm going to refer to my phone here where we had the RX 570 and also the 1660 Ti, um, both at 1920 by 1080. Now, the main kind of key differences were all we did was took it at 1080 and then just changed the quality settings. So we had the ultra high, medium and low presets. Now, one sort of key information that you're going to find, just like most games coming out today, is kind of the key differences between ultra and high. There really isn't a mass amount in it in terms of what you're seeing aesthetically. It's more, you know, I guess the finer details, which if you are playing quite a fast paced game, you're not really going to notice because you're not focusing on, you know, the particles, the amount of lighting. You know, it's still going to look absolutely fantastic. But just going, taking the RX 570, for instance, from ultra to high, you know, we have to take essentially, uh, we, we gain 20 uh, frames per second. Or if you're going the other way from high to ultra, you're basically taking a 20 frames per second hit for something that, in my opinion, you're not really going to see. When it goes from uh, sort of high to medium, you're talking sort of 30 uh, to 40 frames. You know, again, quite a big hit. The, the biggest one is going to be low to medium. 
the difference between low to medium in terms of frame rates was 66 frames per second, just on the RX 570. I mean, that's absolutely huge. When you're looking at the 1660 Ti, you know, we had very, very similar results there. These are some huge numbers, which again comes down to, I hate the fact that there's a bit of a stigma around you have to hit a certain number. To be honest, when I play a game, I want to get the balance of it looking good, it feeling good, and just generally having a good time when it comes to gameplay. And the, the Division 2 actually really does give that as well. The game in itself is actually really good. If anyone's played the original Division, uh, you'll notice obviously that that was set in a different city. This time we're in Washington, DC. Uh, but everything is, I mean, I guess what I'd expect Washington to look like. It's a great game as well in terms of, you know, the, the kind of general premise around it, looting and sort of, you know, just having a good time with your friends on it. Now, I'm actually going to sit here and play a little bit more, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gave you kind of the idea as to, you know, what the game's about to a certain degree and also the fact that, you know, find the settings that work for you. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did, you know exactly what to do. Let me know if you like this type of video. Maybe we'll do some more kind of stuff, you know, based around some other games that are going to be coming out in the near future. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Let's jump in firstly and see how this card performs as well as the... Nah, I've faffed that completely up. That in, yeah.